Are you looking for an honest, no-nonsense review with some sleep data for the Snoo bassinet? If so, this is the video for you. In this video, I am going to be covering my use of the Snoo with my first child, as well as my honest review of the Snoo bassinet. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Jenny. I am a teacher, a mom, a doctoral student, and also expecting baby number two in July. So I am in my third trimester. And there's a lot of questions that I've seen about whether or not the snoo is worth it, how can a $1,300 bassinet be worth it? And I'm not here to answer that for you, only you can really decide that. But what I wanna do is show you what the snoo does and also the sleep data from my first child. And that might help inform your opinion of whether or not it's something that you would like to purchase yourself. So the Snoo is a smart bassinet. What that means is, is that it responds to baby based on baby's crying or whimpering, and it will adjust based on that. The Snoo starts out on what is basically a baseline, and it has a baseline volume for sound and a baseline vol volume for movement. So the Snoo will move and also play white noise at the same time for baby to help them sleep. You might be wondering what exactly the Snoo comes with because that's a question that I had. I wanted to know what all was included in the Snoo box because this is a very expensive bassinet that you're getting. So when you get the box, you're going to be getting the Snoo itself. You're going to be getting a sleep sack, their proprietary sleep sack, sleep sacks that look like this in sizes small, medium, and large. And you get one set of sheets. Now, I personally don't think that one set of sheets is enough, so we definitely ordered at least one extra set for those times when our daughter spit up and we had to change the sheets in the middle of the night. Something interesting about the swaddles that I really like is that these swaddles, not only do they have mesh around the knee area to keep their knees able to move, they also have snaps at the top. So once baby is done being swaddled arms in, you can actually open the top of these snaps here so that baby can put their arms out. So if you have a baby that really wants to sleep with their arms out, they still can do that with the Snoo. It also comes with these little clips here on the side. This is kind of the Snoo's whole claim to fame. You slide these clips onto the side and baby will be sleeping on their back. Another common question that I see as far as the Snoo goes is, I'm nervous about the Snoo moving around too much and jostling my baby. I'm worried about that. And believe me, I understood that too. What's really cool is that the app has what's called a motion limiter. So you can turn on the motion limiter and that will max out how much movement the Snoo will actually do, even on its highest settings. Now, it will still get pretty loud as far as the white noise goes, but it's white noise and that's fine. The, the white noise can get a little bit louder and it, the, the sound actually changes too based on the higher level. So the Snoo also has a proprietary app that you have to download with it. I'll put a picture right over here of what it looks like normally once your Snoo is connected to Wi-Fi, but it's not on. So it will say, clips engaged, let's start Snoo, and it's on standby and it has a color associated with it. So you know that the Snoo is plugged in, it's ready to go, but it's not on yet. Once you're ready to turn it on, you can actually do so from your phone directly. I can press this button right here, or I can press the button that's on the Snoo to start the Snoo, either one works. There's also a setting section, like I mentioned, you can set the motion limiter, you can set weaning mode. Weaning mode is excellent when you're worried about transitioning over to a regular crib. Basically weaning mode, it's only the sound from the snoo. They don't move at all. The only time it'll start moving is if baby's really fussing. So this was excellent for us to use as far as when we were transitioning Alice from the snoo to a crib. A lot of people will try to tell you, even though they haven't used the Snoo before, oh, it's impossible to transition them, it's gonna be impossible, they're gonna be reliant on it. That's the function of weaning mode. Weaning mode will basically help you move from the Snoo into a regular crib. We really liked that mode. Honestly, it took Alice maybe three days before she was ready to go. My only complaint about the Snoo in terms of the weaning mode is the fact that there's no way you can buy the same exact sound that the snoo makes outside of the snoo bear and that's pretty new i never use the snoo bear i was really hoping to have a sound machine track that was the exact same as the snoo that i could play in her room but they, that's just not something that they have unfortunately i know what a lot of you probably want to know is the sleep data does this actually work does this actually help your baby sleep for longer i'm going to show you the exact sleep data for my daughter for four different months because she used it basically as soon as she got home all the way until she was able to not only roll over but pull up. We stopped strapping her down once she was able to roll over and you should do that 
as soon as they're able to actually roll over. You don't want them to get trapped. But we still liked using the snoo with motion off with the sound machine effects until she was able to pull up in the crib. So let's take a look at Alice's monthly log. I'm gonna look at May. So I've gone back to when my daughter is six weeks old. So at six weeks old, her monthly average for how long she was sleeping at night was six hours and three minutes. That's pretty good for six weeks old. Now you'll notice on the chart here, there's a lot of different days that kind of fluctuate. So it's the same as any baby where you're gonna have nights that are better nights of sleep and you're gonna have some nights that are not so great nights of sleep. And that's fine. Six hours and three minutes is completely reasonable to me. And that's a pretty good sleep amount. Starting at six weeks old, she was sleeping for six hours-ish each night. Now let's look at the following month. This is when she was about three months old. Her night sleep average now was nine hours and one minute. So her night sleep went way up. And one thing that we did ourselves is we actually did a dream feed. So we, we would put her down to bed, and when we went to bed, we would wake her up to feed her one more time. And that, so that's in the nightly pickups, but that's something that we did regardless. So that is... When she was three months old, she was sleeping nine hours a night. And I wanna to mention too that this data includes that pickup for that dream feed. So it's still cumulative over the course of the night. She was sleeping about nine hours. It doesn't mean that she's sleeping nine hours straight. If I look at how long her sleep averaged that night, from the time that we did the dream feed until the morning, she was averaging about six hours. But we chose to do that dream feed because we figure we're already awake, let's feed her one more time and see how long she could stretch to go. Now let's look at the following month when she was four months old. When she was four months old, her night's sleep was 10 hours and 36 minutes cumulatively. So as you can see, each month her sleep went up and up and up, which would be normal anyway for a normal infant. But I did want to show you the data that I have right here for my snoo for my actual child so that you can really see the progression of it working. Her longest sleeps went up as well. They were about seven hours long that month. The last month of data I have is when she was five months old because right at the end of five months old is when we transitioned her over to her own crib in her room. So just before we transitioned her over to her own crib in her own room, the monthly average was 11 hours and 24 minutes of sleep with a longest sleep time of seven hours and 50 minutes. So as you can see, the amount of time that she was sleeping on her own went up significantly. And one thing I want you to take a look at in my graph here is Towards the end of that month is when we were doing that weaning mode. You'll notice that the graph is still pretty high every night. She really didn't lose much sleep when we were going through weaning mode, which is awesome because the transition was really not too bad for her, which I'm very grateful for. So let's talk about cost and final thoughts of whether or not I think the snoo is worth it. So first things first, the snoo is very expensive. There's no way around that. It is expensive. It is $13.95 full price for the snoo bassinet. It is not a cheap purchase for a child. It's something that we chose to get because for me, you cannot put a price on sleep. And even though I was a first time mom and I had no idea, I wanted to try this out. I wanted to see if this was actually something that worked. And we're gonna be using it for our second child who's born in July as well. And I'm gonna be really interested to see the difference in the data between my first child and my second child. For me personally, I feel that this is worth it if it's something that you are willing to invest in, especially if you're planning on having two kids. I feel like it might be a good thing to have for two different kids because the resale value is pretty high. Right now, if you go on Facebook Marketplace or eBay, if you're buying a used snoo, a used snoo is gonna run you probably anywhere on the low end from $550 to $700. So even though it is an expensive purchase, you can feel pretty confident that you're gonna get a fair amount of money back when you resell it at the end. Another thing that they started doing too is you can actually rent the snoo. So you can rent the snoo for a couple of months and I think they actually have a trial period as well where you can try it out, see if it works for you. If it doesn't, cool, send it back. You didn't spend that $13.95. My last tip I wanna give you for saving some money on the snoo is there are certain times of year when they actually have snoo sales. I bought my snoo for about $850. I did not pay $13.95. I bought it around Black Friday. Definitely, if it's something you want to do for a child, I would start looking at the site early on in a pregnancy and decide whether or not it's something you want to invest in and then keep track for when they actually put it on sale. Because for me, I bought it for 800 bucks-ish and I'm gonna be able to flip it for about $600. So cumulatively between two children, I will have spent $200 on a bassinet after I sell it, which 
to me is very reasonable. That's what most bassinets, the, the nicer bassinets that are bedside cost. I hope seeing this data was really helpful to you. And if you have any questions about the snoop, please let me know down in the comments below. One thing I did want to mention at the very end of this video is that it is currently under review by the American Academy of Pediatrics for being a safe sleep smart bassinet, but it is not approved just yet. So that is something you want to keep in mind. We didn't have any issues with it, but I do want to make sure that you know that it is under review, but it has not been approved yet. So just make sure you're keeping track of those different ABCs of safe sleep and keeping that in mind for whether or not you want to purchase a snoo. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I make new content all about pregnancy, motherhood, and childhood development, and I would love to have you along for the ride. I appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you next time. Take care.